Hi, I'm Pete Bridal. Now it's no secret that a lot of organizations struggle with human error, and in particular, managing non-compliant behaviors. It's a common problem and a constant source of frustration. If employees know the right way to do things, then why don't they just do them? It's simple, right? Well, you'd think so. But what if I told you that we're actually part of the problem? What if I said that line managers and line supervisors not only go out and seek these kind of behaviors, but then recognize and reward them? Sounds crazy, right? Well, maybe not. Let's take a look at an example. So let's say there's two employees about to do the exact same job. We'll call them worker A and worker B. Now for our purposes, these workers have the same experience, the same background and the same level of expertise. The job itself is to go into a confined space and do some work and we're expecting that to take about six hours. Now on completion of the job, worker A didn't get hurt, but worker B didn't get hurt either. But here's the difference. Worker A took six hours, but worker B only did it in four. Now along comes the supervisor to find out how well each of those workers did. Now like every good supervisor, they know that safety is the most important thing. So that's the first thing on his list. And it works out, well, worker A didn't get hurt, well, worker B didn't get hurt, and there were no other kind of bad consequences, such as a, a near miss or environmental spill. So the supervisor says to himself, it seems like both workers are as safe as each other. Now he moves on to the second most important thing. How well and how efficient was the job done? Well, it works out that worker A took six hours and worker B took four hours, so clearly worker B is the much better worker. And of course, worker B gets all the recognition and worker A gets next to nothing. Now let's see what the supervisor missed. Works out that worker A did exactly what we were asking from him. Took time to vent the tank, did a gas test, and followed the procedure exactly as he was supposed to. How did worker B do? Well, worker B took a few shortcuts and a few risks. And he saw the procedure as nothing more than a check the box exercise. Now let's see how each of our workers responded to the feedback they got from their supervisor. So now worker B, having received a hearty pat on the back from the supervisor, it's very unlikely that they'll change their behavior. In fact, it's probably more than likely they'll repeat it next time around. But here comes the rub. Worker A says to himself, I hear what you say about working safety and that that's the most important thing. But it seems to me if I want to get ahead, I actually need to be more like worker B. And in no time at all, we've just doubled the size of our problem. Instead of one worker doing the right thing and one worker doing the wrong thing, we now have two workers doing the wrong thing and both are taking risks and shortcuts. And we've just made the problem a whole lot worse for ourselves. And this situation, almost a common situation, can repeat, be repeated over and over, over days, weeks, months, years, until probability finally catches up with these workers and something bad actually happens. And then of course we run around trying to figure out how could this have possibly happened? How is it possible that one of our most competent workers failed to follow one of our most basic policies and procedures? And there you have it. This is what happens when line managers and line supervisors recognize and reward work by outputs and results rather than how the job was executed. Now this might work well for finance people or accountants, but it's actually a very poor way of recognizing and rewarding operational safety. And so this is a very common problem that often plagues organizations. But if the supervisor had done something a little bit different, if they had actually gone to the work site and found out how the work was being executed, they would have realized that actually worker A was the stellar performer and worker B probably needed some help, some coaching and some counseling. And the whole situation would have been reversed and actually worked for us rather than against us. So don't you follow the example here and have your line managers and line supervisors recognize and reward work by outputs and results. 
make sure it's always focused towards work execution and that your employees are always following work in line with policies and procedures. Thanks for listening. My name is Pete Bridal and good luck in managing human error and other non-compliant behaviors.